Hi everyone, welcome to Anu's classroom. Today's video, we will be talking about systems of accounting. This is the fifth part in accounting for manager series and it is created in such a way that people even from the non-commerce background will find it very easy to understand. So let us get started. Now, before we start with the different systems of accounting, let us quickly recap what accounting equation is. So if you want to know in depth about accounting equation, I would uh, request you to check out our MMPC4 Accounting for Managers playlist. Okay, there we have step by step uh, explanations of what accounting equation is, what asset is, liabilities, owner equities, all those things. Okay, so quick recap about accounting equation because without knowing this, we cannot learn about the systems of accounting. Okay, so this is the basic accounting equation that is, assets is equal to liabilities plus owner's equity. So that is the, it is kind of like a very straightforward relationship which links assets with liabilities and owner's equity in a business transactions. And this accounting equation ensures that our balance sheet is always remaining balanced. Okay, it just means that each entry made on the debit side should have a corresponding entry or a coverage on the credit side. And this accounting equation is also called as basic accounting equation or balance sheet equation. And this is considered as the foundation of our double entry accounting system. Okay, so let us look at the different types of accounting systems. We said, right, accounting equation is the, uh, what you can say, it is the foundation of double entry book system, uh, accounting system. So from there, we can understand that double entry system is one type of accounting system. We also have a single entry system. Okay, so a single entry system is uh, mainly useful for small businesses who would want to record every transaction as a single line item in the ledger. And the other is the double entry system where that is what we usually write down. Okay, And that is what this double entry system of accounting is what you would find most often when we uh, Google for accounting uh, books and all like journals, ledgers, how to write a journal, how to write a ledger, all those things if you Google. What you would find is actually the double entry system which is what is most widely used today because in this every transaction has both a debit and credit uh, denoted and that too in separate accounts. So it actually ensures a company's books actually man balance because every entry, a de every debit entry will have a corresponding credit entry. So let us look a little bit more into what a single entry system is. So we can also call single entry system as a pure entry system and it actually does not follow any of this dual recording format that is there is no credit versus debit over there okay it's just a single entry just a cash book is maintained and all tra cash transactions will be recorded in this single cash book only there is no other ledgers or anything in this place okay all transactions even of personal ledger are simply recorded just like in a rough book you're just writing down the rate who gave how much that's it it's just a cash book okay so naturally we can understand that this is not a very scientific method of recording transactions and therefore we generally don't use it in modern days okay we only use this single entry system when we have to prepare final accounts from records that are actually not uh, complete okay for some reason and some of the salient features or advantages you can say of this single entry system are that only this one cash book is kept okay so what happens is that the personal and business transactions they will be recorded together so this there is no concept of real and nominal accounts now what is real account what is nominal account we'll come to it but just understand this means there is no concept of different types of accounts in this system so profit and loss can be ascertained like at the end of the day we can find out how much was the profit or how much was the loss but we cannot represent it in a financial position of the organization okay suppose so it is kind of like a very small business uh, model okay let us say let us take the example of a fisherman he is a day to day sales person right so maybe um, you are a middleman fisher fisherman okay you are not the one who is going into the sea and getting it let's say people go into the sea they bring bring in the fish and then in the fish market in the central fish market they put it for auction right so suppose say on a particular day um, we bought fish worth 1000 rupees right from the fresh fish market so this is our investment on that particular day now we may go about um, from say um, house to house and we might be selling fish right small retail units maybe one kg maybe half a kg maybe even a quarter of a kg maybe two kg that we don't know okay so we might be going and selling so each time maybe 
a housewife she comes and buys um, fish worth 50 rupees maybe someone might be buying it for 100 rupees some maybe even for 120 rupees and so on and so forth so we'll just go on writing and then in the meanwhile maybe during lunch time you did not have time to pack in the lunch so you may go and have lunch that could cost you 100 rupees right and then again you will go uh, again selling fishes okay so at the end of the day when you tie take all these things okay uh, whatever your expense was and whatever your income was at the end of the day maybe you will find that you ended up with 1500 in which case 500 rupees was your profit or maybe you would find out that you ended up with only 900 rupees because you could not sell all the fish perhaps in that case you will have a loss of 100 rupees right so we will know we will know whether we made a profit or we made a loss but can we get our exact financial position actually no right so there and definitely there is no trial balance prepared so we cannot for sure say the account arithmetic accuracy of the accounts right maybe you forgot to enter the money for t we don't know we'll never know why because we are not actually record um what you can say we might omit it and we there won't be any way of verifying it unless we uh, rack our brains and then finally say oh yeah i had had tea from this particular shop and i did not write it down right so that is a because uh, the reason why is that your it's not just your business transactions that are getting written it's just a cash book we are writing everything down just like in a rough book okay and now that is the reason why we say apart uh, rather than large corporations only very small scale small 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 vendors or very small business like this fish uh, example okay fisherman example or the fish seller example which i said only they can make some sense out of the single entry bookkeeping so some of the advantages are that it is very easy to understand these transactions it is cost effective it is time saving and naturally it is good for small business anybody can prepare this right you don't need big accounting knowledge or anything to prepare the single entry book system but if you are to go with a double entry book system then you need to know where to write the credit where to write the debit all those things you need to know so it is good for time uh, small business okay and it, it provides as an evidence of transaction yeah i've written this down in the book means yes some transaction has happened for that amount right so those are some of the advantages of the single entry system now again what are the drawbacks mainly because of this incomplete nature of this data entered financial reporting is impossible right and it is very hard for this business owner to do a financial analysis and maybe plan for resources for the future right and errors if at all has happened it is very likely to go unnoticed theft is less likely to be detected because there is no asset inventory in place right and tax authorities also they do not recognize the single entry system of recording for reporting purposes of any kind okay that is single entry system now let us come to the double entry system okay this is so this is the scientific method actually it has some rules and principles it has to be followed those rules and principles has to be followed okay and the basic uh, essence of this double entry system is that every transaction will at least affect two accounts at least minimum is two accounts it could impact more than two there are some transactions which could affect three accounts like if there is a sales transaction and we give a discount to that person okay for that sales transaction then it will affect the sales account that person's account and a discount account also so similarly but at least there will be two accounts okay and this is known as the debit and credit rule that is every credit uh, entry there must be a corresponding debit entry and this double entry system is the one that is widely used and recognized in the accounting world okay and again a double entry system it ensures that the company's books balance so some of the salient features of this double entry system are that uh, there are multiple types of accounts that is maintained okay so real nominal and personal is actually the classification of accounts based on the um, traditional method okay so that classification of accounts i'll talk to you in depth in another video okay but let us understand this much that different types of accounts are maintained in the system okay therefore we can there is a way for us to verify the arithmetic accuracy of these financial records okay by preparing this trial balance and the system does not have many modifications it allows for the preparation of balance sheet which can reflect the financial position of the organization it is very easy to detect frauds and errors in double entry system okay so 
in contrast to the single entry system this is a very scientific method right it assists uh, in rechecking and cross checking of these accounting documents and since we have both the debit and credit uh, which uh, sides which are recorded for that particular transaction we have separate accounts for purchase as well as payment okay when we pass entry we pass entry on both sides okay and this account is automatically reviewed in this method we will quickly find error if both sides of the trial balance are not balanced hmm? and the profit and loss account can in indicate how much profit or loss we made at any given time so it is very easy for us to actually understand the financial standing or the financial position of our business okay and as long as we have the accounting books we can analyze the profit and loss report and the balance sheet for at least two or more years like we can compare also last year how much we made this year how much we are making all those things we can compare right so once again misappropriations or frauds these all things can be easily identified okay and yeah we can um what you can say we can actually prepare the financial graph of how this company is growing whether it is growing or whether it is declining what is the what how is the company performing that we can actually find out if we are using this double entry system now again this system also comes with a little bit uh, disadvantages first and foremost is it is a bit complex right it has a lot of different rules and, and procedures and principles um, which uh, uh, which even countries are allowed to have their own rules right so there is a little bit not much but a little bit variations in how certain transactions might get written like the american standard would be a little bit different from how the indian standard is written or the european standard is written like that there are so, some differences so naturally there is a complexity which comes in with that okay not any person can not a, a layman without knowing anything about double entry system will not be able to write it down but it is not the case in single entry system right look at us ourselves we we ourselves will struggle a lot in the coming days unless you have that exceptional talent which some people really do of catching this points very fast we will definitely make a mess out of credits and debits more than one time or even more than 10 times while we are learning it okay it is a bit difficult it is complex and since we split this into a lot of different accounts and then the credit debit and then all those rechecking and all those things it takes time okay it takes time to maintain these accounting books than if it were a single entry system right so what will happen is that we will need more staff to record all these transactions maybe one person will be uh, uh, responsible for writing it all down in the journal as and when it comes another person might be responsible for right checking this journal and then preparing the ledger another person will be the uh, responsible for maybe the trial balance or the balance sheet another person will go through by checking all these things and preparing the financial reports the income statements all those things right so it will need more staff and trained staff that is skilled staff so naturally it comes with a premium okay so it will lead to increasing the cost so because of this problem right because of this cost involved in uh, maintaining a double entry system what happens is that if it is a very small organization like this uh, the case of the fish vendor which we said right it is not um, feasible for them right so because of this fees which is Uh, coming with this system so they cannot afford to hire anyone with proper accounting skills so that is again a drawback and again every transaction it is documented twice right once in the debit and the other time in the credit so it will naturally give rise to a larger book that is we need more space for storing this transaction that means a much more efficient computer to process this data in if it is stored in the electronic form right so there is a duplication of data that is happening which means something which otherwise would have taken 1 mb would right now take 2 mbs because there are two now the different types of accounting methods one is the cash accounting method cash accounting method it records the incomes and ex expenses as they are received or paid okay that is when money trades hands so we talked about the different systems of accounting that is single entry and double entry now we are talking about the different types of accounting methods right that is cash accounting method and accrual accounting method now i am not going in depth about all these things this is just for you to give a simple understanding about what cash accounting is and what accrual accounting is because sometimes you will find out some some places we will say about uh, accrual accounting as well so this is just to give you an overall idea so that you don't go blank on this right if you need an in depth video on Uh, accrual accounting or cash accounting let me know in the comments right so what cash accounting is is that 
whenever we get money or whenever we pay money, we'll uh, write it down. So that is cash accounting. Okay, accrual accounting is actually um, what you can say. We don't write it as and when we get it or as and when we pay it. Okay, Accru uh, accrual accounting method is generally required by law uh, when the business exceeds five million in sales. Okay, and um, it actually records the dollar amounts when the transaction occurs and not when the cash is actually exchanged. Like for example, you buy something on credit. Okay. So you are not immediately paying the money. You are getting it on credit. And maybe after one month or maybe after a few days only, you will actually pay money. But in accrual system, what you will do is as and when the transaction happened, as and when the sale happened, maybe you bought a PC worth $5,000 or okay, or maybe 50,000 rupees. You bought a laptop worth 50,000 rupees. Let us assume. Okay. But you bought it on credit. Right. So uh, let us say what is today's date? Okay. Let us say on 31st of January, you bought this. Okay. So the company did not get that 50,000 rupees now. Why? Because it happened. The transaction is a credit transaction. Okay. But you are supposed to show this in your book of account as and when on 31st of January. Okay. The money would come maybe on the 5th of February. Okay, maybe it came on the 5th of February, but the trans the thing will be, the transaction will be recorded on 31st itself. So that is uh, accrual account. Now there is a drawback to this. The main thing is that supposing such transactions happen by the end of accounting year, let's say. Okay, and if there are large number of transactions like this happening, like in the case of maybe Apple or Samsung and all, there will be a large number of transactions like this happening. Okay, and if it is at the end of the accounting year, you actually will not get that money by the accounting year ends, okay? But you will have to show that in your book of accounts and you will have to pay tax in advance for the money which you have not yet received. So that is a small drawback of this accrual accounting method. But in case the business exceeds 5 million in sale, then it is required by law that businesses perform this accrual accounting method. By law, it is necessary, okay? And it is believed that the method, this method of accounting Accounting actually gives a more accurate picture of the company's finances and if you think about it yes that is true also because see maybe there are uh, let's say 500 pcs did get sell sailed okay or maybe there were 5000 phones premium flagship phones which got sold in that particular accounting year so maybe it is after five or ten days but that money is going to come to you right so that sale did happen that money is promised to you and it will come back so it is by uh, so it is actually you have to show that as this year's sales itself not the next year's sale right so that is why uh, we say that it is uh, it shows a much better or uh, accurate picture of the company's finance so those are the two different accounting methods so thank you so much for st sticking with me till the end of this video uh, i hope the different types of accounting systems and the different ways of accounting is clear to you um if you did like the video Give us a thumbs up if you have any video suggestions, if you want any topics covered sooner than uh, before, like let us know in the comments. If you have any doubts, post it in the comments. I do read them. I will get back to you as early as possible. And if you liked the content, if you like how we are preparing the topics, consider subscribing. We have a lot of other topics lined up on the way. Okay. And do recommend us to your friends also. Let us grow the community together. Thank you so much. All the best. Bye.